All right, we got the new meteor satellite, so we're gonna search for meteor over here at Satnongs to get our TLE file. And we're gonna find our meteor MN23. Click on data and scroll down and there's the TLE information. So you would copy that and then you would paste it and give it a name. So it already did that. So we're gonna copy that and then we are gonna go to our meteor gist folder and what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna edit these two files we're gonna put our new we're gonna put our new uh, new TLE information in there paste save all right so we edited those two now we're going to go to Orvatron, the TLE folder and we're going to edit this one so we're going to scroll down to where the old the old meteor was and we're going to put this right below it Hit save So we got that and meteor just if you've already ran with the m2 before then your pre-existing settings will be fine everything will work you know if you haven't done it then you need to go through here and uh adjust a few things like your lat long put the color of the cross if you want your location on there you can adjust the size and thickness there's a bunch of stuff over here all this would be the same the gentleman that has the site for these links he had posted in one of the groups on Facebook a new link for these so you could add this to these two lines right here and save it and it would automatically update those two folders that we already edited but I'm going to be using a pre-recorded pass so I want to use that TLE that I already had treatment three max field black lines there's all kind of settings that there's a guy Les Hamilton that's got a pretty good site on setting all these settings up so you would do your edits in there and then SDR sharp you go down here you're gonna open SDR sharp and scroll down to this config and we're going to add a new satellite so we're going to give it that new satellite name copy paste that in there and then we're going to click on the old meteor and we're going to copy all this information right here right, copy it go back to our new one we're going to paste it, copy the lower section, go back to our new one, paste it, and we got to change the 1 to a 9 on both of these, and then we need to change this to OQPSK, that's the new one right there, oh. That's the one we'll be using. So we'll change this right here. Paste. Paste. All right. So all this is set. 
so we can close this when we run this the first time and the Orbitron kicks in the AOS you're gonna notice the name down here will be slightly different and so we're gonna have to change that name but for now we're gonna close this I forgot something in Orbitron to make sure that you have clicked on your rotor you're gonna go over here to your main your settings extra and put a check mark in auto start rotor driver that way when you open Overtron it's gonna open SDR sharp so I'll hit that okay all right so we changed everything that we need to change so you would just do like you used to you would open up Overtron Orbitron's going to open SQR Sharp. We're going to select our satellite. Over here, double check. We got to change our our frequency here. 137.9. Downlink mode. FM wide. That's good. Now we're going to do a little simulation. And progress into our day all right so now we're gonna creep up on this now you notice it didn't start playing look at the name here and look at our name we need to edit our name to match this. So it's meteor dash M underscore two. We need to change it to whoops, I don't want here. Let me click down here. Meteor dash M underscore N two dash three. So we need to add an underscore right here. Now we'll close that. Now, if we back up, I don't know if we got to restart. We'll see. Yeah, we got to restart. All right, let's restart after we had to do that edit. All right, simulation. Moving our day ahead. All right, and as the satellite comes into position, there we go. We started. Everything's playing. It's waiting for a lock. It's on the right frequency. Now it's just waiting for a lock. So when the satellite passes, you know, same old, same old. Once you got a signal, it gets a lock. Then it'll uh, start reading that and it'll open up the it'll open up the uh, LRPT decoder. And you should be good to go if you're using a RTL SDR dongle or a <coughs> no elect or a AirSpy R2 or AirSpy Mini. You should be all good to go. Now, the other thing was, is the other day I recorded, today I recorded uh, with an SDR play device. And, because uh, I was messing around trying to figure out how to get all this stuff to function. And so, what we can do for the SDR play device is we'll record it. Let me pause this and hook up the my RSP1A. All right, I hooked up my RSP1A. All right, okay. So 
normally it's got a sample rate of two megahertz that's as low as you go <coughs> so if we record that as it is right now you can either record it and it's going to split it in three or it's going to split it in two and a, a, the 10 to 14 minute passes as it sits now would record out to like six gigabytes and it would split that file which would make it unuseful for us to play back in SDR sharp so what we're going to do is we'll tune into our frequency and we're going to put a decimation of 8 FM wide FM 120k and hit play and then we're going to hit scheduler and you'll set your recording foil for the recording folder to wherever you want to save your recordings to and uh, you can set this to record for dates and times that way if you leave your SDR Uno hooked up and your SDR play device hooked up and running it would record but I just did it manually so what I did is as I was watching the pass get closer on Orbitron and when I would start to see the signal start I'd hit record and I said the pass is anywhere from like 11 minutes to 14 minutes and uh, when you got your settings like this that recording is only going to be six to eight hundred megabytes and it'll be all one recording so that worked for me so I'll kind of show you what uh so that recording that I had this one right here 671 megabytes So I look up at this scheduler here. Won't jump ahead. You can see it's starting to come. There we got good signal that it would be locked into. So we're going to close this. We're going to close SDR play. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to our Meteor GIF folder and go to where our recording was at. So the important thing about the recording is, is you want to right click on it, go to properties details and look at the length of the recording so the SDR sharp is just going to play your recording on a loop and if it gets to the end of the recording it starts again it's going to mess up your decode so you want to take notice of the length of this 11 minutes and 44 seconds so we're only going to let it play in SDR sharp for 11 minutes and then we're going to hit stop So shrink that down. All right, so we're gonna open up SDR Sharp. We're gonna go up to source, IQ wave file. We're gonna pick our, our wave file. Then we're gonna adjust the frequency and what's going to happen is we're going to hit play and then we're going to open we're going to run the meteor gist exe so we'll hit play we'll run this and then we're going to click on this demodulator 
We're going to put a check mark in there. So, 11 minutes. So, I'm going to hit play. I'm going to open this. See the, you see the errors for the old things. We could fix that if you wanted to. Now, we're going to click on demodulator. It's connected to the plug-in. Now it's just waiting for a, a lock. Oh, we got a lock. And it opened up the LRPT analyzer. Yep, there comes our image. So now we got 11 minutes. So I'm going to pause it till it gets towards the end here. Alright, we're getting to the end of our 11 minute recording. So, we're going to hit stop when we get close to it. Let's see if we hit stop, you'll see it begin its work over here. That looks like about the end of it. We lost our lock. Nothing coming through, so we're going to go ahead and hit stop. See, it's doing its calculations and saving. When it's done, it'll close. Once it closes, the meteor just will start doing its work. All right, hopefully we got an image. Otherwise, I got to redo this recording. So we're going to go to Final Images, our UTM, and there we go. That's our recorded pass that record, I recorded with an RSP1A. So that's how we'll do that. Um, I'm going to upload this, and I will put links to the SatDog site and to Les Hamilton's site. So when you go to his site, you're going to scroll down, you're going to see this Meteor GIS installation, installation pack. We're going to click that. You're going to scroll down here to where it says click this button. And you click that button and you'll install that Meteor GIS suite that we've been using. Alrighty, well, hopefully this helps. Um, I'll add that information and let's see what happens.